ఓరుభ్యో నమ హరి ఓం శృతిస్మృతిపురాణానాయం కరుణాయం నమామి భగవత్పాదశంకరం లోకశంకరం అహం మమేతి పరాచ్చంతి తవాన్యీతేర్థబోధో నీ మేస్తి చాక్షితో from here onwards it is atmamana samvadaha that is the name of the text also the section in upadesha sahasri and so it begins as uh, uh, it begins with an address to the mind hey manaha you just visualize you stay alone you, rem- you when you are alone okay when there is nobody around and you are alone then uh, you put aside what all other things uh, are engaging your attention put them all aside and just be with yourself and then look at your own mind be aware of your own consciousness Con- what is consciousness i mean consciousness is the flow of thoughts that uh, that is what i call consciousness okay and uh, so consciousness is in constant flux it is constantly moving that is what the conscious waking consciousness now it is very clear right waking consciousness now be conscious of that waking consciousness you can say like that or uh, conscious of consciousness if that expression you have some difficulty with it you can call it uh, you be aware of your own consciousness which is in motion be aware okay that is what you have to do that is the alertness which we are talking about what is it suppose it it suppose it is you are not alert what does it mean it only means this much when you are not alert you are identified with the mind with the flow you are identified means you are one with the flow you do not have any space with reference to the flow that is what is called you are a samsari you are a worldly person in that flow there is pleasure then you are a person of pleasure you are you are the, you are you that is your pleasure and you are one with it and in that flow the opposite pain is there then you are stuck with the pain this is how we live people live this way you do not have any space with reference to the mind so then uh, then uh, go after uh, the world because there is no space you are one with the mind and because you are one with the mind you are one with the organs uh, sense organs as well as uh, organs of action you are one with the body and then uh, anything associated with the body becomes mine and the one who identifies with the mind and then organs and the body sense organs organs of action and the body becomes the center me this is how the samsari is live don't be a samsari for god's sake sometimes you step out of that flow that flow of consciousness you step out of it you can if you want you can step out of that consciousness that inner space is always available for you only you have to invoke it so you step out of the consciousness that, that when you do it that is what is called alertness so be alert be aware of the flow called flow of consciousness and uh, step out of it another way of putting it is be a witness to this flow of consciousness now you are looking at the mind now the mind is the other you are not the mind anymore mind is the other okay therefore when you are alone you just uh, uh, allow uh, you just uh, step out of that flow 
and then mind becomes the other and now you address the mind he mana ha already the atma mana samvada has started in doing so it, it is a, its a significance i cannot really describe its glory in doing so you have created you have invoked or you have discovered that inner space with reference to mind then the mental states are now known to you they do not define you the mental states they do not define you because you have stepped out of the flow therefore you are aware of the mental states sukha dukha etc there is sukha but you are not sukhi there is only sukha therefore you don't become sukhi there is dukha you don't become dukhi therefore that kind of a space inner space uh, you have to get you should do it that is the way out of this bondage of samsara that that you have taken the first step in the direction of self realization you have to do it now people are crazy they don't do such a, they don't follow such good advice they have some funny notions about themselves about life about religion about world they think that going into the world in identification with the body mind is the right thing to do that is what how they live and thereby they pick up a lot of sorrow and fear from this world and they live in accumulated sorrow and fear that is how they live then they turn to religion the religion uh, of the masses and most of the gurus and acharyas uh, and uh, the uh, the custodians of religion uh, most of them they follow the religion of the masses only they are followers they are not thinkers they look around uh, the masses are following a particular religion so they they equip themselves with the details of that particular religion and become one more guru of the masses they are followers and they give some beautiful names to this following if a, if a, if somebody is called you are a follower he won't like it because follower is not a good title but if you say you are a traditionalist they love it but it means the same there is no difference between the two huh Uh, so it is like if you say cat you don't like that name but if you say bidalahar madyalaha you like it something like that <laughs> nothing more therefore this in this popular religion this issue of identification with the body mind is not addressed at all therefore i do not see any difference between the worldly people on one side who are totally identified with the body mind and the religious people those who follow the popular religion uh, i don't see any religionists let us call i don't see any difference between the two as far as body mind identification is concerned both are in the same hole okay but you come to vedanta when you come to vedanta don't bring all that baggage here you leave that baggage there that samsara baggage and that religion baggage both are of uh, the same nature i told you in both there may be other kind of differences but as far as the identification with the body mind is concerned as far as the total absence of the inner space is concerned they are same don't bring that baggage here don't muddy up the vision of vedanta by importing all that baggage into this keep this clean you remain entirely free keep all that baggage outside and now come into the vedanta with an open mind and now look at the mind oh my manaha there is manaha in that verse that is sambodhana prathama ekavachanam he manaha oh mind so then the, what is the first statement oh mind you are acting eha eha cheshtayam you are moving uh, in such a way that you have created an enormous calamity to me in life anartham ihase so 
what is the calamity that the mind is creating by its movement? The calamity is aham mama. That is the calamity. Aham mama eti tvam anartha meha se. You say padacharam for that? Tvam yu. Aham me. Mama mine. It does anartham. Calamity eha se. Creating. Oh mind, you are creating this calamity of me and mine. Here once again, in my usual style of uh, explaining these verses, I want to point out uh, that this me and mine is a syndrome. And uh, you, it is ubiquitous. You look at the worldly people, the worldly person is me and mine. Me, such and such, so and so. Mine, my wife, my children, my home, my career, my titles, my cash, my wallet, my bank account, my future, and then religion, my religion, my God, my worship, and uh, my ritual, and my merit, punya. And uh, Papa, he doesn't talk about, but inside he knows, my Papa, I have done this, I have done that. So, the worldly people and the religious people equally, including their gurus, etc., who promote this popular religion, all of them are, without exception, stuck with this syndrome called me and mine. And uh, they don't even, uh, uh, they cannot believe even that it is a calamity in life. That is the calamity. They cannot believe even. That is the calamity. They don't understand that me and mine is the calamity. They think there is some uh, ill health that is a calamity. They think that there is a conflict with wife or son or father or whatever that is a calamity. They think they did not get a promotion that is a calamity. And somebody tells such and such a planet has walked into your house. Planet walks into your house? I thought planet is going around the sun. Uh, it doesn't walk into your house, but somebody tells that. And so for him that becomes the calamity. This me and mine, the worldly person. He cannot even believe that the, these are all, none of these are calamities. Or even if they are calamities of some sort, of sorts, then they have their origin in the, the initial original calamity. And that is the me and mine syndrome. If me and mine is false, then what? They cannot even believe it. We will see then what. First appreciate that me and mine is a syndrome and it is the origin of all calamity. If you dismiss me and mine, suppose I become free of me and mine, then what will happen to me? We will see that. Wait. Have patience. Look at the religious person. They, they always start with a sankalpa. And I always had a problem with this sankalpa. Because I notice that in the sankalpa, in the first part, the me and mine is getting negated. Me in Padma Rao Nagar, in my house, me in my house, that is getting negated. Uh, there the me is connected to the entire Brahmanda, Shvetavaraha Kalpa, Vaivasvata Manvantara, etc. The entire creation. In connecting the me to the entire creation, in a way you are diluting the me. That is the beauty of uh, that part of the sankalpa. And then uh, the time also you say, in, in uh, connecting myself with that time. What is the time? Shvetavaraha kalpa. Vaivasrutaman mantara Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga itself is 4,32,000 years. Whereas my age is 65 or 70. You, you compare the two. You are not talking of your age of 65, 70 years, silly age. You are talking of an astronomical scale of uh, time. In that way, what happens? Somehow, your me is uh, connected to the whole. Thereby, it gets dissolved. You add salt to the water, the salt gets dissolved. Therefore, by connecting the me and mine to the whole, in terms of space and time, you are likely to dissolve the me and mine, at least partially. Eyes will open. Your attention is drawn to the whole. 
but suddenly you ignore all that, you keep quiet when all that is being said, and suddenly momo patta durutakshayadvara, you start like that, and then put all your desires in it. And aham you put, gotram, dharmapatni sameta ityadi, and therefore by the time the sankalpa is over, Instead of getting the, the me and mine neutralized, you end up strengthening the me and mine. And the, the uh, priests, priests what they do? They follow the popular religion. In a way, the devotees uh, decide what the priest is going to do, and the priest decides what the devotees are going to follow. Uh, it is like a nyonyashraya. Okay? Therefore, you cannot find fault with the priests either, because that is how the devotees are. And you cannot find entirely the fault with entirely the devotees, because that is how the priests are guiding, or the gurus or acharyas are guiding. Therefore, the whole effort of these rituals is centered around the false notion of me and mine. So first, recognize the disorder. Recognize uh, the the problem. You pinpoint, you put your finger on the problem. And the problem is aham mameti anartham. Who is creating this anartham? Oh mind, you are creating it. Vam ihase. You are moving in a such a way that aham mama becomes very strong and it has become a calamity in life. You see, a person uh, is hurtling forward towards divorce with his with his life partner, with his spouse. So who is pushing him in that direction? Me and mine. A person is having a conflict with his boss uh, in the office and he is very disappointed, he is very distressed about it. Who is pushing him into that conflict? Not the boss. Me and mine. They don't understand that. Therefore, you first put your finger on the issue. It is the diagnosis. It is like you do blood test, a red flag is shown. Here the particular parameter, the number is wrong. You take care of that. And here the red flag is being shown. What is the red flag? Aham mameti anartham. What is this aham mama? You examine. Okay, you, you need not finish the verse and rush forward, you examine the Saham Mama. You see, you look at a, a, a circle, a, a, a geometric example, there is a center. And uh, the center has always a space around it, that is how it is. There is space outside of the center. Okay, so look at yourself, there is a center in you. What is the center? Memories, a bundle of memories, the historic self. I was born, that is how you start. And then, uh, so that center, which is in you, that is the me. You know what? It is the result of time. You think about it, what I am saying, you have to think about all that. What you call the center is the result of time. You say, I am Swami TV. So, a senior Acharya, suppose I say. This is Swami TV, the senior Acharya is the center. And that center is created by whom? By time. time. Time has created that center. So, you are a victim of the center. It is like a, a cancer started in a small way, very tiny way, but it has now grown to the fourth degree, something like this. It requires time. Therefore, the center is uh, uh, a product of time. And this center uh, is, uh, is, uh, is put in place uh, by family, by society or community or society, by religion, by culture, etc. So culture also will come into it. Now I tell you, if you expect me to promote culture, you don't expect me to do that. I am not here to promote culture. Because in promoting culture, you are promoting me and mine, my culture versus your culture. Something like my garden versus your garden. 
my garden is more beautiful than your garden. Now you don't want me to push, uh, want me to move in that direction, do you? If I move in that direction, I will be doing injustice to this verse. Therefore, these are some nice things like religion, culture, tradition. So, I suppose I claim that I belong to the such and such a tradition and I put some two, three names. So, I am defining the me and mine. I am, a, um, I am concretizing the me and mine and giving a, a very sacred color to the me and mine. What is sacred about me and mine? Nothing, I tell you. There is nothing sacred about me and mine. When Brahmadeva, the Creator, He talks in a way of highlighting the me and mine, then Brahmadeva is committing an error. Okay? Therefore, that is the center. Now this center always has a space outside of it. Center has a space outside of it. Because uh, there is movement, you know. The movement requires a space and therefore the center, the me, has uh, the space around it. And, uh, but then uh, the space is bounded. There are borders to that space. It is not open space. Me is a center, you know. It cannot have open space. In a circle, uh, you can have, uh, you may have, when you have the center, you have space around it, but is it open or is it enclosed? It is enclosed. Therefore, there is space in it. Space around the center. And it is enclosed. So, and uh, what is enclosed? Whatever is recognized as mine, that is enclosed in that space. And circled in that space. In that, in that space. The, the, the interesting part of it is, as long as there is center, there is the circumference. There is uh, the bounded space. And uh, things that you recognize as my own, they occupy that uh, limited space, that bounded space. So, the, as long as the space, now can you say, the center is uh, there, but the space around the center is unlimited. Cannot you have like that? You can never have such a situation. When there is a center, there is necessarily space around it which is uh, enclosed or bounded. You can never have open-ended uh, situation while retaining the center. Okay? Uh, therefore, uh, that means what? You are a center living in bounded space. Therefore, you are Baddho Jeevaha. That is a prisoner. That is how a prisoner is understood. A prisoner is one who lives in limited space. That is the prisoner. Therefore, you are a person. You are like. You are not unlike a person living in a prison. A prisoner living in a prison. I am. I am thrilled by this understanding. Because we are all prisoners. We build prisons around. We create the prisons. God won't create anything. God doesn't create, you create. Therefore, we are living like a prisoner in the prison. No, no, there is a lot of space. The prisoner also a lot of space. He can walk around inside the prison in the yard. But he is always a prisoner. The prisoner, even when he is walking in the spacious yard within the four walls of the prison, maybe he is open. In the, he is uh, open to the sky, etc., and he is walking inside the garden, but still he is a prisoner. Why I am talking so much about prisoners? Because we are all prisoners. The samsari, my, ho my house, my wife, my children, he is a prisoner. And the sannyasi, my ashram, my shishyas, my trust, he is a prisoner. Eh? He is a prisoner. So, suppose the prisoner is given a larger yard. Suppose. Suddenly, the Mushirabad jail is transferred to Charlapalli jail. And there the jail is a bigger jail. 
and it has a larger yard. But still, they are all prisoners only. Similarly, we are the prisoners in India. Now we get a visa and go to America. And there we are still the prisoners. Uh, so, so, tetam lokam swarg, tetam gatva svargalokam vishalam. That is the vishala. The heaven is always very spacious. If you go to Canada, you, America is vishala, but Canada is really vishala. <laughs> and therefore, but still we are prisoners. Having gone to America, we are prisoners. So, why? Because as long as there is the center, there must be limitation of the space around, and therefore the center can never be free, the me can never be free, the one who is proclaiming aham mama can never ever be free. There is a straightaway contradiction, aham sa so and so gotraha dharma patni sametaha mama so and so gotrasya dharma patni sametasya Chaturvesa Palapurusatra Siddhyartham Moksha. Uh, you are contradicting yourself because uh, the moksha is not meant for that aham mama, the center with the space around. Therefore, the center, the me, can never be free. Now, you are very right in proclaiming, O oh Manaha, hey my, O oh mind, you are creating a lot of trouble. You are uh, by moving, Iha uh, Cheshtayam. By moving, you are, you are moving in such a fashion as to create a center with a limited space around it. You are creating anartham. You are doing a big, uh, a big injustice. Therefore, uh, but some people, they, they say, I am free. Eh? I have free will. This is, a, this is a fashion. I have free will. I have seen uh, this free will uh, question. It comes, uh, in every satsang it comes. And uh, I have seen many Mahatmas, uh, they play a double game. I look at it like that. They, they, they blow hot and blow cold. What is blow hot? Yeah, free will is required. You all had free will, that's why you have come to the class. I have free will, that's why I am taking the class. So that is blow hot. Then blow cold. No, no, we have to surrender to God. God's will alone prevails. Now blow cold. <laughs> so blow hot, blow cold. Are why you tell clearly, is there a free will distinct and separate from the supreme will? You tell. Hey Swami, you tell, I am telling you, you listen. There is no free will. We are all prisoners. As long as you keep the me, the center intact, going, you are a prisoner. Where is the free will? It is like the prisoner saying, I am free within the prison walls. Okay. That is the free will. That kind of free will you want to keep, you keep it. The prisoner says, I am free within the prison walls. Now, you ask me, is he free? No, he is not free. He is not free. Then uh, I tell you, you examine, uh, I am still uh, pursuing that aham mameti tvam Is it okay? I can uh, stay with it for some more time. Uh, so, uh, the prisoners, uh, you examine the psychology of the prisoners. He, he is in a prison and he knows that he is imprisoned and he knows the limitations within which he has to live his life. He knows. And for him, the, the, the prison conditions, uh, which are already set, he cannot uh, have any say about it. For him, a few things uh, which are apparently outside the prison walls, they become very important. Like, uh, um, like uh, a, a, a family member visits, one visit is allowed per month, and therefore that visit becomes very important. And uh, somebody gives a book to read, and that book uh, becomes important. And then a minister comes and distributes the sweets, that event becomes important. And therefore, because he is living in the prison, and therefore these things, uh, they become very important for him. Because uh, he, he is uh, helpless, he cannot change his circumstances. Therefore, these outer things, uh, which appear uh, like a flash uh, now and then, they become 
very important because he knows he cannot escape okay that is the prisoner but uh, my lesson is not about the prisoners in the charlapalli jail you know the teaching is over the samsari is you know therefore for the samsari he is a prisoner and he knows he cannot escape he is, he is imprisoned appa he he is uh, in a house with wife and children and with in a career and a job and all that uh, and me and mine he he knows that he is uh, uh, bounded for good he is a prisoner and he cannot escape escaping from marriage is not easy <laughs> yes yes and uh, you are tied to the job and uh, you cannot uh, give it up that easily children are even more binding you cannot escape uh, the one who escaped from that was uh, became a buddha ye to aasan baat nahi hai you cannot escape and you know you know that you cannot escape and therefore uh, concepts become extraordinarily important i am examining the psychology of the prisoner the samsari for him a concept what is the concept there is a heaven above and the heaven is populated by, there are many people who live in that heaven they are all a very a very pious people reach there very privileged people and they have all kinds of privileges like a dance program people are enthused by these dance programs and if you announce the day after tomorrow there will be a dance for everybody will be waiting for it this is the heaven and so all the concepts of heaven become important for him why kuntha is a concept it becomes important there is god there and god has four hands becomes important god gets married and again married to one more woman important all these uh, trappings of a popular religion which are mere concepts uh, which are con- uh, not your concept somebody else's concept uh, they become extraordinarily important for the prisoner because he knows he cannot escape so he knows he is stuck he cannot escape then he asks is there any planet which have, which blesses me with sanyasa some vedanta you know he knows he cannot escape and he is studying tatva bodha okay and then he asks guru maharaj how are the planets why why planets suddenly suppose sanyasa why are the planets favorable for sanyasa that shows that he is the prisoner and he knows that he cannot escape he somehow gets a funny concept that the planets come together to pull him out of this bondage by himself he cannot escape look at this pitiable condition uh, therefore these concepts become extraordinarily important the concept of religion becomes important the concept of nation becomes important the concept of community reddy community kamma community they become important therefore and culture indian culture south indian culture music dance they become important huh? and he quotes the chagraja chagraja is more a philosopher than a musician as far as i could understand okay in spite of acquiring all these concepts and all these ideas and uh, living with them still he is living in a prison why he has acquired so much of religion and all that culture uh, religion nationality uh, community uh, so many things he has picked up uh, why why he is uh, still in prison because as long as there is dissenter there is no freedom therefore dissenter is there dissenter always creates a space which is always limited however expanded it may be it is still limited and uh, one more thing the center is a product of time and it creates a time the center is a product of time and it creates a time how it creates now i started studying vedanta in 2001 and by 2010 i'll get moksha i'll finish kathopanishad in 4 months 
then I will finish some other in another six months. Uh, so then I will come to Brahma Sutra and finish that in another six months. The center is creating time. The silly center itself is a product of time, and now it is creating time. And so it remains in the flow of time. It, ha- it cannot escape from time. And there is no truth in time. There is only changeful within time. And therefore anything which is changeful is a transient and will vanish. Therefore, as long as he is the product of time, creating more time, he can never uh, escape from that present created by time. This uh, center, the me, has become a slave to its own space and time. Like, now I am 60, I have another 20 years life before me. Look at this slave. Huh? Then uh, I am a sannyasi of such and such order. Look, that is the space, you know. Look at the prisoner. So, the center creates its own space and time and remains in that bondage as a slave to space and time. People, uh, you see, people are prisoners, prisoners. For uh, just to summarize this uh, prison, so people are bound to house, to property. They are bound to property. Very funny thing it is. They are born to property. They are born to family. My family. Me and my family. Then they are born to community. They are born to society. South Indian society, Tamil Indian society, Telugu society, etc. Then they are born to their culture. They consider it as a embellishment, alankara. It is an ornament. It is not an ornament. It is a space of the me, the, cre- the space created by the me, and therefore our culture is superior. I always said this, when I, when I go here and there, people say Indian culture is great. You should don't say it. Other, others have to say it. I should not say Swami TV is great. I should allow other. If I start saying, others will be watching. Okay, the, the fun. Whereas if I don't say anything, others, one of them may be kind enough to say that he may show some kindness to me and say, Swami TV, you are talking, you are talking some sense. If he says that, it is like a gajarohanam for me. <laughs> so I am talking sense. I am fulfilled. Because I am talking and talking and talking. Now a meaningful person comes and says, I am talking sense. I am fulfilled. Therefore, you should not say Indian culture is great. You wait, you keep quiet. Then comes a white man or a black man and says, Swamiji, Indian culture is great. Good. It should be like that. If you say my culture is great, then that culture is the space you have created for yourself and you are bound within that space. Therefore, so now we have described this is the present quite well, right? This, uh, this uh, story I have said earlier. But the story has uh, a beauty in it. The story of you and me. This is the story of you and me. Okay, therefore, uh, it is, uh, uh, it makes us think. It puts us on, a pa- on the path of inquiry. Any time and every time we recite that story. Therefore, I am telling that story. So now, There is a question. Let us raise a question. Is it possible not to have a center? Because it is the center which is creating so much nuisance. So, is it possible not to have a center? Yes, it is possible. Oh, you mean eh? you have to run to Hrishikesh or Uttarakashi and live in a cave so that you will not have a center. Is it so? No. No. People have run away to Uttarakashi and uh, um, Rishikesh. We have yet to wait to verify whether their center is uh, same or stronger or weaker. We have to verify that. No. I am saying uh, it is possible to live in this world and yet without a center. Means you are free while living in this world. And therefore, this attempt to escape from the world 
it is uh, the time and the space created by this ignorant me. It creates. You escape from the world, then you become free. When will you escape? After four years I will be retiring, and then I will escape. Time is, uh, he, time is bound, you know. And therefore, uh, I tell you, it is possible to live in this world completely. Doing your job, assuming that you have an honest profession, so doing your job, doing everything with a tremendous vitality, you can be like that, okay? And without a center. You can live like that. When, only when you know what the center is, when you know what the center is, the center is gone, okay? It is possible. Then a question comes. What is the method to get rid of this center? Okay. Now the moment you talk of method, or you make it even more, uh, the word can become even more uh, uh, captivating or impressive. Methodology. Now it sounds much better, you know. So instead of asking, what is the method to escape, uh, to get rid of this center? You, do, you ask, is there a methodology to get rid of this center? That question you ask. Okay? So the moment you are asking for a method, or methodology, whatever, are you not creating time? The moment you ask for a method, you are creating time. Eh? Uh, therefore, any talk of method which obviously belongs to time, center itself is a product of time and it is creating time again and again. Therefore, any talk of method is no good. Okay? Then Atmamana Samvada, is it not a method? It's not a method. It's an inquiry. It's not a method. Pranayama is the method. Okay? First you study Tattva Bodha, then do Kathopanishad. After six months you study that, that becomes a method. We are not doing method, we are doing Shravanam. Shravanam is not a method. Shravanam is now, not in time. You are not creating time. You have to be cautious. Suppose you are creating time in the name of Shravanam, then that will not help you. No surprise, people listen to Vedanta for years on, but they get nothing out of it. Nothing substantial out of it. They get to some superficial things, some terminology they get, some accumulated knowledge they get, but they remain within the prison. Now that prison is decorated with Vedanta. Vedanta decorations. You see, people decorate their homes. Then somebody decorates with plastic flowers, or somebody decorates with good uh, fragrant flowers. Everybody decorates in his own way. For Diwali, everybody decorates. Somebody puts three lamps, or somebody puts three hundred lamps. Therefore, we have put uh, the decoration of Vedanta to our prisons and live still within the prison. Therefore, don't talk of a method. Okay? Okay? Don't talk of a method. So, you have to look within, examine, and uh, inquire into that center me, how it is created by time, and how it is creating time further, and understand all of it with a tremendous sensitivity. Don't you notice by now, some of your mind, some of your me feels like getting neutralized. Eh? Don't you think so? Therefore, it is not about a method. It is not about method. It is not uh, some method which is in some book. If you say method, it is in some book. People always talk of book. Book is useful. I am holding a book in my hand. But uh, so much overemphasis on the book, as if the book has this uh, key, uh, to liberation, it is, uh, it is very misleading. Okay? So suppose 
I have studied uh, five Upanishads, but still I find my you be frank, you you be honest with yourself. I studied five Upanishads so thoroughly. Still I am in a in the prison. I am the prisoner. Now by studying how many more Upanishads I will get out of prison? Suppose you ask that question. You have created the time, the me, and therefore you are talking a language which is not going to help you. People are caught in this language mostly. So, therefore you have to see there is no method. You have to see that there is no method. What is the method to, uh, to get rid of the snake that is superimposed on the rope? What is the method? There is no method. You see that there is no method. You see, put light and see what it is. That is not a method. Method means karma. It is not a method, it is not an effort, therefore there is no method, because the moment you say method, you introduce time. Then they talk of Messiah. In the West, they are all talking of Messiah. Messiah will come and he will liberate us. They are waiting for the liberation. They are creating, the me creates the time. Uh, therefore, so when you see the me, the center, and its movement, its operation, you have to see all this. Then I will point out one more thing. This me, it creates a duality. Me is the jiva. And there is a bigger me called God, Deva. Jiva versus Deva. The Dvaitam is a product of this me. Me creates a Dvaitam. And uh, you see that, you see that the Jiva Deva Bheda is uh, the um, manufact is manufactured by the me. The me manufactures Jiva Deva Bheda. Uh, any, any duality, uh, you are different from me. That is how me manufactures a division. Therefore, you cannot keep the me and yet hope to realize the truth of oneness. Therefore, you have to see the me with all its ramifications, how it is getting created in time by variety of things, how it has enclosed itself in a space, and how it is populating this space with a variety of things, all kinds of concepts it puts into that space. Family. Family is a concept he puts into that space. Then Vamsha, the lineage. So that is another concept which is put into that space. Then merit, demerit, God, gods, eh? um, all uh, pilgrimages, this, that all kinds of concepts are pushed into that space. And therefore, as long as that means uh, uh, is there, there is no freedom. And you see all that. You see, seeing is not a method. Yafashyati, sapashyati. Therefore, when you see the movement of the me, and you see how me is creating time, and you are the wary of this cunning me pushing time in your way, and uh, you are very alert, and you are very sensitive, okay? And uh, you are uh, extraordinarily sensitive. So that is the Atma Manas Samvada, it makes you all that, that sensitivity. So now, uh, so now you are aware how the mind is moving and how the mind is building the center. You are aware of it. And once the center is created, it is building the space around it. Necessarily it has to happen, and then the space is getting occupied by concepts and more concepts, by beliefs and uh, by convictions and all that. And always looking for another method, karma. By doing which karma I will get moksha. By doing which upasana I will get moksha. I am doing upasana of Rama, now what other upasana I have to do? Look at that, uh, how the space is filled with all kinds of concepts. So, by merely observing the movement of thought in terms of me and mine, so by, by observing, 
by observing all this movement, that is what I am describing all this time, by observing all this movement, the mind becomes very clear. It is like you pass the water through a candle and the water becomes very clear. As it passes through the candle, it becomes very clear. All impurities are gone. Similarly, in Atma Manas Samvada, when you watch the mind very with extraordinarily, extraordinary sensitivity and alertness, the mind becomes very clear. And as the mind becomes clear, it becomes clear of the me also, the center also. You can uh, uh, practice a few things um, without me. Practice not in terms of time. For example, you look at the rising sun with uh, the vision of Gayatri Mantra in your heart. There is no me there. And when there is no me, there is no space. And therefore, you can readily experience, if I may say so, the oneness with the sun. In fact, it is not the oneness with the sun that you experience. You do not experience any division between yourself and the sun. Means there is no me. It is possible. Looking at the moon, it is possible that there is no me. Upanishad has given the example that this person loves his beloved, the young lady he loves with all his heart, and when he is looking at her, there is no me in him. And when you, uh, when you love something with all your heart, the me vanishes. And then uh, you can even try to look at a tree without the me. Me is the subject, you know. This example I have described many a time. You can look at the tree with full attention and you notice that the me is not there. Me is the subject looking at the object called the tree is not there. And now the tree is no more an object. Somehow there is no division between yourself, the pure being, and the tree, which is another expression of the same being. It is possible. So, you can look at the tree without the center me. And uh, when there is no center me, you experience a vast space. When there is center me, you experience very limited space. So, this tree, uh, it is ten feet away from me. Tree, a long or a short tree or a tall tree. That is how you experience a space. But when there is no me and you are looking at the tree, there will be no space. You experience a vast space. In fact, you experience immeasurable space. This is what is called Aprameya. Prama is measurement, you know. Ma, mang mane. You measure Pramana, Prachaksha Pramana. And ten feet away there is a tree. And it is a tall tree, it is a mango tree. This is the Prachaksha Pramana. What does it make you? It makes you the center me, Pramata. That is not what we are looking at. That's why immeasurable space. That means aprameya. Therefore, so this is very simple. It is not the, the me is the complex thing. It is simplicity. What is the real simplicity? Looking at things without me. That is the real simplicity. Suppose I look at you without the me. I am the guru. You are my shishyas. That is the me. But suppose I look at you without any of that uh, baggage, you are all friends. Friends means there is no meetyakta. Okay? Then uh, there is an enormous space there. There is a tremendous freedom there. Therefore, you can look at the other person without the me. Then he is neither a friend nor a foe. You can look at a tree without the me. Then you can experience an immeasurable space. Therefore, uh, so it is possible to live in this world without the me and mine. And that is how you become a liberated soul. So this much mischief of mind you are creating, and I am aware of all your mischief. That is not a method. Awareness is not a method. Then uh, there are sankhyas. 
This Sankhya said, the movement of mind is meant for myself. Now, you know what happening, what is happening there? The me is a product of time, which means the me is a product of memory, means the me, me is the product of the movement of mind. And so it is an integral part of the movement of mind. But the Sankhyas, what they did, they separated the me from the movement of mind. And they gave a separate status to the me. Eh? You see, you are doing Sankalpa, you are doing a Kamya Karma, doing Sankalpa. Okay? Who is doing the Sankalpa? Me. And uh, that me is created by all those thoughts. But that me separates, uh, that, that thought process separates the me from the rest of the thought process. And keeps the me separate. Therefore, me, the doer, this is the karma, the being thing that is done. Whereas, the doer is the mind's movement, the karma is also mind's movement. You see the mischief there? Mischief or mistake? Tremendous mistake, great error, that they separate the me and give it a status, jiva. And then talk of earlier life, later life, these concepts become very important for a person who is imprisoned. That's why everybody will ask, what was the earlier life, what is the later life? You know why? Knowingly or unknowingly, they know they are imprisoned, they are bound and they cannot escape. Therefore, let us find out what is my earlier life and what is my next life. Therefore, the Sankhya philosophers, they made a tremendous mistake, the error of judgment, in positing an individual or a person separate from the mind's movement. Now there is a person called Jiva and they call it Atma. Atma is many. And then there is the mind moving and the mind is moving for the benefit of Atma. Look at that. So first create me out of movement of mind only and then say the movement of mind is meant for the benefit of this me. Deco? Mischief? Huh? It is like you project a scene on the screen from the projector using a film where there is a hero and the heroine is dancing and now you say the heroine is dancing for the benefit of this hero. Are Appa, this hero is also created by the projection only. You see the mischief? This is what the Sankhyas are doing and what they do is wrong. So Shankara mentions the Sankhyas. He has to mention Sankhya and dismiss because that is how his times were like that. Padachyadam for the second part. Parartham ichyanti tava anye ihitam. Now the explanation for that part. The verse has four parts. First part I finished, the second part let us finish. Anye others. That is the Sankhyas. Tava, you are. Your means, O oh mind, you are. Ihitam movement. Parartham. Meant for the other. Which is the jiva. Ichanti, they subscribe. So they, they, have, they have given a status to this center and called it Atma or Jiva, Jivatma, separate from Brahmatma. And now this mind is moving, creating sukha and dukkha. And it is creating sukha for whom? To this jiva benefit. And it is creating dukkha for whom? To punish the jiva. Therefore, to, apply, to make the jiva happy, the mind is moving. Then the mind is moving in the opposite direction to make the jiva unhappy. Therefore, all movement of the mind is meant for the jiva who is also called Atma. This is how they put a thesis. Then Atmas are many. Then there is a higher Atma, there is no higher Atma. You, they are... Because higher Atma, if you say, the higher Atma must be bound more than these smaller Atmas. Therefore, ignore the higher Atma. There is no higher Atma. You see, the person is married and he finds uh, he is imprisoned and he takes to sannyas and then performs God's marriage. Look at this contradiction. If marriage is a bondage, and it is a bondage for God also. So Sankhya says, Sad is a trap. Therefore they said, no, marriage is bondage, you are married to the mind, 
and mind is uh, bothering you all the time and uh, this you are uh, going along with it and therefore this kind of a marriage with the mind for the atma is not necessary by positing another supreme atma and getting married and all that therefore they dismissed higher atma therefore in that regard uh, they have some point there but in making a separate jiva out of the mind's movement creating a separate status of atma to the me and then and then saying that all the movement of mind is for the benefit of this atma for the bhoga of this atma sukha bhoga dukha bhoga both that kind of a thesis is uh, they have done it it is wrong because me is a false entity you have to dismiss the me if you follow this sankhya thesis the me remains permanently the second half नतेमेस्तीचाथिता